the team, uh, videos obviously that the team filmed th themselves. We have also filmed a very cool team intro video out here at RoboSub that we'll be showing at the end after the run. So don't tune out after these runs are finished because we've got some really cool stuff to show you. But right now, we have Anton Tolstanogov joining us up here on the podium. Welcome, Anton. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to actually jump right over and do the start because I think they're in the water and ready to go. So let's count them down and uh, we can start the clock and then we can chat about what's going to go on here. So let's give them a three count. Three, two, one, start. So uh, how are you feeling about this run, Anton? Oh, I'm nervous. Very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I am sure. You guys have conquered so much adversity in this competition yes. because coming all the way from Russia, for the viewers that haven't uh, watched any of the recap videos yet, you guys lost all of your electronics, the most important brains and uh, sensing components of the robot for days uh, yes. in transit with the airline. And yet you managed to come back and uh, get it together and get in the finals. So that's yes, a huge no, achievement. Nice. Yeah, I think it was, what, two or three days at the beginning of the competition when everyone else was in the water, they were practicing, they were getting ready, and you guys had to sit idly uh, while we scrambled to try to find out where that missing bag was with the airlines. Yeah, and your, your team was so good-natured when that happened because you didn't know whether that stuff was lost forever. <laughs> you know, if it was ever going to show up, it could have been just completely missing. Uh, and you just had to sit there and wait. Yeah. I think uh, we will be on the spectators. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very, very hard for you, but you put a good face on it, and you guys were all still cheerful and, and friendly to talk to, yes, and uh, yeah. we thought that was great. So, Anton, what elements of the mission are you planning to run today? I think we uh, complete all mission uh, except, uh, except uh, pizza delivery and maybe... Um, Everything except pizza delivery, and you're not going to do the steering wheel or the... Uh no, I think not. Okay. So uh, coming through the gate there, um, how about these buoys? Are you looking for some of these buoys, or are you going to skip them? On the, uh, our computer, no it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so while uh, oh. maintaining a, a high depth here, yes. coming down for the path, I would say, on the other side. Yes, yes, yes. Yesterday, during the semifinals, we saw a very deft spin right before this parking <laughs> gate to go in through sideways. I thought it looked great. Coming here and lining up. There's the spin. Oh. Look at that. Beautiful, and then just sliding across. If, if only my car parked itself that way. <laughs> One of the things that I'm always struck by when the robot really does it right <laughs> is how di much actually more difficult it would be to remote control it with that degree of precision. You know, this is, so this is why when you see an unmanned vehicle working properly, you think, well, it's, it's uh, only a matter of time before robots really should do all the driving. Nice. Overhead view there showing the speed traps. Once again, the numbers we're looking for are 16 for RoboSub 16 and 98 for the first year of the competition. If you try to detect, uh, detect the traps. Yesterday in, in the semifinals, your drops were absolutely perfect. Yes. The question uh, as we watch for these drops. Uh, my, my mission in team was uh, detecting digits, and I, I, I accept the uh, way uh, touch, uh, touch new uh, 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 true buoys, true drop the markers. Buckets, yep. yes. Okay, so the, we're watching your handiwork in action right now. <laughs> yes. Perfect. I uh, didn't see if there was a drop there. Actually, it's tough. Uh, you know, once again, accentuating the difficulty of this problem, it's tough for us to see which bin is which and read those numbers. 86, I see. 
Yes. Oh. Huh. oh. 98. It's upside oh. down. It's the 98 pin. There's the dropper. <laughs> right in the bin. Perfectly. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one, 16. Or 91, upside down. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking of numbers, a question in from the web was, is there an online scoreboard to see how the teams are faring? Uh, there is not an online scoreboard because the judges have to confirm all of these things. And uh, for example, with the octagon, we don't know which is the correct until the end. So if you want to know the final scores, you'll have to tune in later tonight for our banquet webcast, which will cover all of the, oh, the uh, winning teams and, and, uh, oh. and what the rankings were. In the evening? Oh, so 7 p.m. Yes, 7 p.m. award ceremony webcast. Oh, okay. We'll all be enjoying a fine dinner and hopefully some large <laughs> paychecks. Question uh, coming in from the web uh, for you uh, about your hydrophones. How is your hydrophone array structured? Are they just in a plane or are they a 3D array? On a plane. We have three user phones. Mm -hmm. It's uh, detect uh, um, a pinker on the plane. So hanging out there. Um, yesterday. The torpedo p task happened uh, right after the bins, but maybe a little, a little lost here on the uh, on the toll booth. Yes, I think so. What's your um, kind of uh, go no go point in terms of time? At what at what time do you say we're not going to be able to bring it back for another run? We have to continue with this run. I think it's time. Is it's already happened. Okay, <laughs> we're seven minutes in and. We're just gonna, it's gonna be one run only. Yes. Divers there, once again, hanging out. Um, one of them holding this handheld camera for us and uh, giving us this nice underwater view. We can just see coming through the, uh, the haze there, the second parallel parking task. Uh, once again, I don't, I don't know how many times uh, to say it. You can never say it too many times. It is difficult to see underwater. <laughs> yes, uh, it's difficult. hard for us, and it's hard for the robots. Now, for in university, it was uh, more, more is easier. Yeah. I mean, this is a real outdoor pool. You can see from the tank walls, uh, there's algae that lives in this pool. They do their best to give us a clear pool, but it's not the same as being in an indoor pool where you have basically unlimited visibility. Yes. We can see uh, from our view here that uh, the diver is following the sub closer and closer to those octagons. So I would say working on that pinger task right now. It's uh, quite deep now at this point from this angle and heading towards the trans deck wall. <laughs> It's very strange, yeah. <laughs> well, we it's definitely doing a uh, buoyancy change here oh. coming up. It's, I would say there's a possibility that it saw some green algae <laughs> there and mistook it for the, uh, for the parking gate because it did that spin around. <laughs> green, uh, not easy to discern underwater. Yes, not easy. But yellow and red, it's still not easy to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to detect. 
No, nothing, nothing about this is easy. <laughs> Those, uh, there are the pizza boxes, and you guys do not have a gripper for the pizza box, right? I cannot. Yeah, so we're just going to be looking or listening for those pingers and trying to surface in that octagon. Well, it clearly swam right, pa swam right past the first one and onto the second one, so it thinks it's uh, localized the right pinger. You can see uh, in that video, very nice image provided there from the diver cam, those thrusters, you know, just spinning a little bit to maintain position. So even when the robot looks like it's not doing anything, there's a whole lot going on. And there we go, right surfacing the in the oh, octagon. Very nice. So uh, potentially quite a lot of points available from that run. We, ha we had parallel parking, we had buoy, uh, no, skip the buoy, we had parallel parking though, we had uh, marker drops and the octagon. That has the potential to be a good score. I hope. Do you want to send any messages back home? Anybody watching? Yes, uh, our friends watching our uh, video, our uh, 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 members of team who can't uh, be in here, it's uh, Andre, uh, Mark, and uh, Gleb. Our friends, uh, they can't be here, and we, we want to say hello to him. And Send them a, me a message in Russian. Спасибо всем нашему университету, моей маме и нашим друзьям. Yes. All right, uh, Christine has another member of your team on the dock, so let's head over there and uh, get a report. I'm learning how to say thank you over here in uh, Russian, and I'm, I'm not very good at it. But uh, let's try to say it. What, what, how do you say it again? Spasiba. Spasiba. That's right. A little bit? <laughs> OK. Right. Well, hey, you did a great job out there. Tell me about your run. Well, thanks. We haven't done everything that we planned. We actually wanted to shoot torpedoes, but somehow we lost it, took wrong heading, and actually was um, just going forward and looking for, for the hexagons, didn't find it, and went to the pinger. Well, Anyway, I think that was good run, so we're pretty satisfied, and that's it for the run. Well, I'm sure you guys made all your friends and family at home very, very proud, and I know they're watching, so can you say you know, thank you, sponsors, anything you want? Go ahead. So thank you, everyone, and I want to mention now in Russian, Парни, все, кто остался в России, Максим, Марк, Глеб, Андрей, я надеюсь, вы смотрите, Всем спасибо. Как видите, наполовину примерно сработало. Thank you. I have no idea what you said, but awesome. Thank you. You did a Thank great you. job. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thanks, guys. Back to you guys. Yes, Anton, thank you as well again. Спасибо большое. Oh, спасибо. <laughs> uh, you must be happy with that run. Um, yes. a, lot of, a lot of points. I think probably the most points on the board so far today. So congratulations. And you guys certainly overcame the biggest obstacle of the week. So congratulations for your Thank perseverance you. as well. Good job. So uh, since we have a little time, we're running ahead here. Um, I thought I'd jump back and cover something we didn't get a chance to cover, which was uh, the course description uh, from, from our overhead view. So if we can transition over here and just take a quick look at the overhead. This is coming out of uh, the technical director's competition rules. So. If you've been following along, you will probably be familiar with uh, most of what's going on here. But just to uh, cover it for people who are tuning in, here is the dock. So that's where the subs start. They must, in order to do any of the rest of the competition, pass through this starting gate. Uh, each one of these orange uh, markers is a path segment. Points are available for acquiring those path segments and following them. They are also extremely useful to the teams because they point to the next tasks. Here's the traffic light task, the three buoys. One of them is solid red. The other two are lit up buoys that have LEDs in them. And so the teams get the most points from touching them when they're green. And so they can either wait for them to turn green and touch them, or if they bump them, they can lock in a color and then bump them again to toggle them through red, yellow, and green. So they have a, some control there uh, over what color they are. This next one. This kind of hedge-related thing is the parallel parking task. 
So the robots must pass through the space defined by the three uh, uh, green arms of that task. Extra points uh, for parallel parking, for turning sideways and passing through sideways plus or minus 30 degrees. The bins that we saw that uh, Far Eastern Federal University just dropped a marker into very nicely. Though they are the speed trap, so the robots must identify the bins and identify the numbers in the bins and drop the two markers in the primary and secondary bins. So the maximum points are achieved from dropping markers in the 16 for RoboSub 16 and the 98, the high speed limit representing the first year of RoboSub 1998. Then, uh, there is the toll booth task. I'll give you a sideways look at that in a sec, but that's the torpedo task. So they have to fire torpedoes through the openings in the correct colors. Today's colors are yellow and green, and more points are available for the small openings than the large openings. Two path segments here, so they have a choice of which direction to go. They can head over here for the manipulation task, that steering wheel task, where they have to turn the steering wheel through 360 degrees and flip the gear shift lever. If they choose to go this way, there's another parallel parking task here. And then finally, the pizza delivery task. This is the hydrophone acoustic localization task. So they are listening for an acoustic pinger. There's one each mounted beneath these octagons at the pizza task. They have to go to the correct pinger. Maximum points are achieved for picking up a pizza, surfacing with it, and then dropping it. And uh, then there's a super bonus points available. Uh, they can ask Dave to switch the pingers and they can go from one pinger to the other and surface in the other octagon and drop the pizza. Here are a few uh, looks at the uh, description of those things. So here's the gate. That's the initial thing they have to pass through. They can pass through in any direction. It doesn't matter. They've just got to get through that space. Uh, there are the four bins. So the uh, two numbers they're looking for once again, 16 and 98 in the speed trap task. Here is what the toll booth looks like. You know, when you're driving down the road and you get, uh, you know, if you're driving on a road trip, you feel like you get a few extra points driving along if you don't fully stop before you put that money in the toll booth. They just have to get those tor torpedoes through the green and the yellow by any means necessary. Actually, this picture is incorrect if people have been uh, watching very carefully because the green and the yellow are on diagonals right. currently, not on one side of it. Here's the manipulation task, spinning that wheel the green segment marks, uh, marks it so they can tell when it's through 360 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's successfully done that yet, even in, in practice. Yesterday in the semifinals, University of Florida spun at 270 degrees, not quite 360, according to the results that I was given. And then there's the pizza task, finally. So it's got a little white structure holding up the pizza box. The robots can grab that orange pizza, surface with it, and then get extra points for dropping it and uh, dropping it down again. So that's the course, that's everything they have to do. That is a phenomenal amount of challenging tasks uh, that Dave Novick has set for these teams. There's no surprise to me that uh, we haven't seen someone just drop in the water and do all those tasks because it is fiendishly difficult to program a robot to do those things. It is, I'm always surprised at the teams that can do as, much, as many things as they do. So you're exactly right. Anybody that runs even uh, two thirds of the course, it's very, very impressive.